If you had damp issues, you might need to replace your floor and you have quite a few options for doing this. In my case, I had to dig out the floor and so some of the calculations that are helpful to know would be the same ones that you're going to need if you're going to be replacing it with a concrete floor. In my case, where I had to dig out the floor, it's also useful to know how many skips you're going to need so you know how to organise that into the job. But first of all, let's talk about the construction methods of the floor that you might use. So you could have a standard timber floor where you've got the joists running this way and the board floorboards going over it like this. The advantages are that the material is light, it's renewable, but in the UK at least it's drafty because you have to have some air bricks to allow airflow underneath so that it dries the timber out if it gets wet. The next one is the concrete option, which is where you put 100 millimetres of insulation, about 100 millimetres of concrete, which has got a DPM or damp proof membrane lining to stop moisture rising up from the ground, and then a sand and cement screed laid on top of that, and then whatever flooring finish you want. If you've got a big void to fill in, then often people use a block and beam method where they put these concrete beams and then they put concrete blocks in between them. It obviously needs you to keep laying all of those in between there as well. It would be obvious if you had loads of holes in your floor, so you'd probably figure it out by that point. But because it's insulated, it's not going to have any drafts and it, it's a solid floor. But it will be a little bit cold underfoot because you've got this great big concrete bit and then sand and cement. So it's a, a massive cold sink. So it's going to take a long time to heat up but as well as that, it will take a long time to cool down. As well as the fact that unless you've got a very good screeder, your floor can end up being all over the place. And that means that you've got two separate stages of getting people to do the concrete for you, as well as the screed. And it can take four weeks to dry. So whatever flooring you're putting on top of that, you're going to have to wait four weeks until you can do it. And the amount that you're going to have to dig out is going to be a lot because you've got 100 millimetres of insulation, you've got... 100 millimetres of concrete, you've got 50 millimetres of a screed, and then whatever flooring you're going to have on top of it. So that's the amount you're going to dig down. That's going to be nearly be a foot to dig down. So let's say you wanted to put a parquet floor down, which is about 25 mil thick. That's going to mean 100 plus 100 plus 50 plus 25. And then you're at 275 millimetres. So this is a plan view of the room. It's roughly 4.5 metres by 3.6. It's got this bay window area that's about the similar area to where the fireplace comes out and the hearth is here. So between these two, you can cancel one out with the other. So for the calculation of the area, 4.5 times 3.6, we've got 16.2 square metres. So if I were then to work out what the volume of stuff that I'd have to dig out would be to get down to the level that we need, so 16.2 times 0.275, because I've converted the millimetres into metres. So that's going to mean that we've got nearly four and a half cubic metres of stuff to dig out. How much is that going to weigh, though? Because when you're going to be throwing it away, you're not going to know the metres cubed. You're probably going to be buying a skip, which is measured in yards or cubic yards. So... What size skip are you going to need? Well, the first thing you need to remember is that when it's a concrete slab or when it's just soil in the ground, it's pretty nicely compacted. But once you've broken it out, then it's going to expand because there's loads of air gaps between all of the lumps that you've got. A good rule is to times this by 1.5 and that will give you roughly what it will be expanded. If it's soil, that's a, a good rule to go by. Should be about the same for concrete too. So if you times those together, it's going to be about 6.68 metres cubed. So this might mean when we times it by 1.131, which is going to convert the metres cubed into cubic yards, going to give us 7.56 cubic yards. Luckily for us, a standard builder skip is an eight yard skip. So we're going to be pretty confident we're going to get it all into the skip. Great. And if you found all of that tiring, then now you've got to dig out about six to seven tonnes worth of stuff from the living room and load it into the skip. This ended up taking me about two and a half days of doing it on my own. So if you had somebody with you, I'm sure it would be quite a bit quicker. 
but also if you've got somebody laying the concrete, don't just allow yourself two days because it's going to be pretty embarrassing if you haven't dug it all out. Next time, I'll tell you how I figured out how much concrete I needed to put in and how I did that part. And I also used a method where it meant that I could avoid using a floor screed so I could get the floor done even quicker.